Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Michael, the Shy City Yacker. Welcome. Hey, today's video, let's dive in and share with you the exact lures that I'm using to catch these uh, Lake Michigan spring coho salmon. This bite has been incredible for 2020. And uh, if you're able to take advantage of it, you know, I want to at least help you uh, get some fish on the board so you can enjoy uh, what I'm doing. Now, full disclaimer before I jump into the video, you know, if you're new to fishing Lake Michigan, if you've never really done it before, let me just say this now, springtime is not the time to get out there and do this. I know it is tempting. You're seeing people catch. You're seeing my videos. You're seeing other videos. You're seeing people on Facebook and Instagram posting pictures of their uh, catches of coho uh, salmon from Lake Michigan on their kayak or maybe even their boat. And it's, it's getting, you know, to you that you want to get out and try it for yourself on a kayak. Don't do it because springtime is when the water temperatures are very, very cold. And all it takes is one slip up for you to uh, go into the drink and get hypothermia. And God forbid something happens. And so I, I, I tell this just to say, wait on it. I know it's, it's hard. Wait until late summer when the water temps are much uh, warmer until the mid, uh, mid 60s, hopefully, and, and, and uh, maybe even upper 60s. And, uh, and then, of course, where the air temperature is a lot warmer. So if you do uh, fall into the drink, you have a better chance of, you know, surviving that, okay? That being said, let's go ahead and break down what I'm using. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up another cam here, see my desktop. Hopefully, you guys can see uh, pretty good here. Uh, now, these are the lures that I've been using to catch all my fish that you've seen in the last three videos on my channel. Uh, it's not to say that other lures won't work because some of my friends are using different baits than I am. Uh, different colors this is just showing you what i'm using and you know give you an idea what you should be looking for to get to add to your tackle inventory if you want to get out there and do what i'm doing let's go ahead and start off with the cranks right now 15 feet to about 30 mid 30 feet is is that range of where you want to be in where you're going to find them if you find the bait balls um they're not far away from that i've kind of found them to be kind of on the outsides of the bait balls, right? So I'll, I'll troll through a bait ball and usually I'll get hit after I've passed it or before, or as I'm approaching a bait ball. They seem to be kind of lingering around the bait. Um, so that being said, a lot of the forage that they're focused on is alewives. They, uh, all the alewives that I've pulled from the coho's belly this spring have been um, about uh, four to five inches. Um, and so these baits are a little, not quite as big as what they've been eating, but they're definitely honed in on it. And my belief is that the uh, the style of bait is, is what's making a difference. So let me go and show you the first one here. Uh, this is going to be a flicker shad size seven. And this is a jointed one. Now, I think these are kind of fairly new to the market, maybe in a year or two. Could be wrong. But I've only started picking these up because I didn't really know they even existed in a jointed version. So <clears throat> I picked one up. This is a fire tiger with a orange uh, tail. And this has been smoking hot bait. Um, hopefully the colors here are coming out correctly. Um, but that is an orange, orange tail, not red. And of course, pretty standard chartreuse fire tiger uh, right there. Uh, that's been a hot bite. Also, uh, as we continue on with these jointed series, Again, another flicker shad, size seven. And, you know, keep in mind, these size sevens, these are these are maybe medium diving, you know, cranks right here, right? And they're very slim profile. They're not very big. You're probably looking at about four inches maybe. Um, and this one right here, as I pull it out, it's kind of the same thing in a way. It's a perch. I'm not quite sure the color or the, the, the actual name. I think it might be called perch fire tiger possibly. Uh, but the same thing here, you've got this orange red uh, jointed tail, and then you've got some of this golden chartreuse with the, with, you know, like the perch kind of black lines coming down and the bottom and the underside here is going to be orange as well. Uh, if you don't know coho, have a thing with orange in the spring. They, I don't know if they hate it or they love it, but they hit it and they hit it good. So these two jointed, uh, jointed flicker shad size sevens have been amazing. Uh, running these back somewhere between 30 feet as far back as 65 feet has producing has been producing very very well straight on the flat line uh, you could do it from a spinning rod setup you could do it from a bait caster if you don't have a line counter you could do it that way i would recommend though just so that you can be consistent with everything that you use a line counter reel so that you can let out 30 35 40 whatever 
amount of length you need to until you hone in on where exactly they're hitting at. If you start noticing that you're getting a lot more hits at 55 feet back, set all your rods to 55 feet, shoot them back, and you should be getting consistent bites. All right, um, these are producing very well. Uh, another one that's been producing very well, which is not jointed, but still a flicker shad, uh, size seven. This is a custom color right here. Um, this is another perch style. I don't remember the name of this color. Again, it, it, because this is a custom color where uh, you can pick this up at Lake Michigan Angler from my man, Rob. Um, shout out to him. Uh, I, I, they may still have some of these in inventory. You have pretty much a chartreuse side with the black stripes coming down a little bit, kind of like the perch kind of thing. And then once again, you have the orange uh, tip on the uh, crank. Underside is orange as well. I don't know if we can get this in the shot here. Apologies if not, but there it is, a little bit of a close-up. Black across the back. Um, this thing has been excellent, excellent uh, bite as well. Again, you kind of notice the trend here. Um, orange, chartreuse, some greens. And keep in mind, the water clarity has been pretty good this spring on all these strips out for these colored or painted colored baits to be working when it's been pretty uh, good visibility in the water. It's pretty impressive. I do have a friend who's been catching all his fish on like silver reflective uh, crankbaits and nothing that's been painted. So again, that's why I'm saying that, you know, take this with a grain of salt. These have been, this is what's been working for me. Um, and there's other lures that can work, right? And, and, and to that point, uh, here I have a brass thin fin, and this is simply in the red color. Um, you got some lines coming down the side of it. This is a shallow, shallow diver, and uh, a buddy of mine, Will, who's been using a lot of these, I put one on here. I had a couple drive-bys. I didn't stick any fish on this one just yet, but the fact that I did get you know swiped on uh, when I had this in the water lets me know that, hey, they're, they're definitely hitting this. And again, my buddy's been catching fish on his thin fin. Um, so this red one right here, somewhere in that 65 feet a little longer length back because it's such a shallow diver and you can see shallow diver here and you can see how that lip is right there pretty pretty shallow right um you want to let out a lot more lines so maybe gets down into that five to six foot range uh somewhere on there the other thing you could do with this is, which is what i did is put this on a lead core put this on a lead core it'll help to take it even further than what it would do by itself with a lot of line out and with the lead core you you might not necessarily have to put out as much line because you put one color in um, that can probably take it down uh, 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 deeper than it could go if you let out more line. All right. So these are some of the cranks that have been working for me. Uh, definitely check these out. But I guess the important thing here is the flicker shad size sevens and running those anywhere between 30 to 60 feet back or so, um, depending on the day, the water clarity. There's a lot of different things could change, but shoot for that. Try it from there adjust accordingly so you can get some bites all right let me move these out of the way carefully and what i'm going to show you the other thing that has been working for me is the uh dodger fly and uh pretty standard uh the the crank bite has been excellent so i've ran these um not nearly as much as i have in prior seasons just because the crank is crank bite has been so so good and uh it's working so why change it up but some of the bigger fish that I have caught this year have actually come on a Dodger in the fly. Now, the first one I'm going to show with you here is going to be the Dreamweaver. This is just straight orange Dreamweaver Dodger. And on it, I have a orange. It's kind of like an orange candy, orange crush type fly. Um, and this is simply the setup that I run on lead core. All right. The big thing with this is running this back about 75 feet for me is what has caught some of my bigger coho for whatever reason. I couldn't explain why. The bigger ones have come off of the Dodger and Fly, but it's just the, what, what's happened. Um, leader length here. I tend to run my leader lengths a little shorter than what most guys will. I uh, can't get this in the shot, but you kind of get the idea here. This is maybe about uh, 16 inches or so of leader length. So I like it to be a little shorter so it's more uh, active in the water. Some days they don't want it that, you know, that much action, but I generally have my leader lengths um, somewhere in that range, a little shorter than what most people will run theirs, just out of preference. It works for me. So uh, that's this one right here. I'll move this off to the side. And here we have, this is the money, man. Simply just a red uh, double O size Dodger. All right. This is, this is, this is it. This is, this works. This works all times of the year. 
Um, it works very well in the spring as well. We have that Dodger, and by far my favorite, my favorite peanut fly ever. I use this throughout the year. I love this thing. Uh, I believe this is called like a blue Poseidon color, uh, but never mind the name of it. The important thing here is that it's got blue and green and some uh, gold strands mixed into it. And I think just that combination, whatever fly brand you get, just having that kind of a color combination, it, I, this thing is just taking a beating and, and, I, and I'm still catching fish on it. I mean, season after season, this stays on one of my Dodgers. If it's not the, the red one, it's the yellow slash chartreuse Dodger with the red dots all over it. Um, that's another go-to one. But these two for this spring, I've used with great success, catching me some of my bigger, bigger coho salmon on Lake Michigan, all right? And again, um, I've ran both of these on my lead core. And of course I could run those off my other rods with a torpedo diver, but because these fish are so high in the water, um, I felt like just running it off a of lead core where I can just get it down into that five to 10 foot range was more than enough. And it was just easier to do it with a lead core line than for me to hassle around with the torpedo divers, which I normally use to put things down into the water. Um, since they're so far up, it just makes more sense to do it that way. Uh, try these out, see how they work out for you. And uh, definitely let me know. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Again, try not to get hung up on saying, I got to get this exact one that he has. Um, you find a brand that has some of these kind of similar colors. You can always go to Lake Michigan Angler and contact them because they do have a lot of these custom colors there. And uh, get these and put them into your arsenal of lures. And hopefully you can get on the water and catch some of these coho as well. You know, the thing about these two, I should mention is that you know, they will catch fish, well, specifically the Dodger flies will catch fish throughout the year. The crankbite um, probably will wear, wear off as we get through spring, and then it'll get more into the flasher fly, Dodger fly bite, and some spoons. But right now, while it's still spring, I think this, this bite should hold for at least another three to four weeks is, is, is my estimate. Just because of the weather's been so goofy, hot and cold, um, a lot of winds, a lot of rains. I think we're really just like a month behind what a normal season would be. So that means if you have the right conditions, uh, if you go out there with a buddy, you have the right protective gear and radios and take all the proper safety measures, get out there safely and catch some fish, should be enough time for you to be able to do that over the next couple of weeks. Now, if you have any questions about anything here, make sure you drop it in the comments below because I do respond to all comments. And one last thing I will mention is that I recently created a uh, group on Facebook. It's a private group right now, but it's called the Lake Michigan Kayak Anglers. And it's myself and a lot of my buddies that kayak fish Lake Michigan regularly. It's our area for us to discuss fishing, reports, sharing information. And if it's something that you wanna be involved in, uh, the link is down below to request to join. And uh, just leave a comment saying, hey, I saw your YouTube video about this, and I'll go ahead and uh, throw you into the crew with us so you can uh, get the information and uh, maybe even come out with us sometime. All right? Thank you for watching. If you're not already subbed, hit that sub button. It helps out a lot. Turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video.